Many measures taken to save the climate are often at expense of the environment. The advantages of green techniques are usually widely measured and often exaggerated. Here I want to talk about the mostly underexposed drawbacks of green energy. Biomass is already under fire now that it has become publicly clear that forests are being felled on a large scale for it. If this is done in Brazil to free up land for agriculture, all kinds of green organizations are on their hind legs. Now that forests are being cut down for energy generation, it has been quiet for some time. World energy consumption is currently about 13.5 billion tons of oil equivalent, or 567 times 1018 joules. According to the FAO, there are about 500 billion tons of woods in the form of trees worldwide. With a thermal value of 19 megajoules per kilogram, that gives 9.5 thousand times 1018 joule of energy. If you divide one with the other, you will see that within 17 years you've already burned all the trees in the world to meet this energy need. Not really feasible. Of course, real biowaste can be used on a small scale to generate heat, but therefore it can never become a substantial part of our energy supply. Another form of biomass is growing plants that can, for example, produce oil or alcohol. In itself, this works fine, but the downside is that this land cannot be used to grow food, or it is at the expense of our scarce nature. The worst example of this are the endless oil palm plantations for which huge areas of tropical jungle have been destroyed. The disadvantages of biodiesel clearly outweighs the advantages. And now green organizations are telling you not even to buy food products that contain palm oil. There are several drawbacks to solar energy. Is the land around a wind turbine still usable for agriculture? With a field full of solar panels you can't do much more. Precious agricultural land or nature thus becomes worthless land that we desperately need for more useful things. Solar panels should only be allowed on roofs. In terms of the environment, there are still two major problems with PV panels. Production requires large quantities of rare earths that are currently produced in a very environmentally polluting way. In, for example, Congo. Inhumane working conditions and child labor also occur on a large scale. Western countries have minimized the excavation of their own raw materials with the result that we, in our clean Western world, can enjoy the proceeds of environmental destruction in other countries. Not very green. And the same substances that end up in the solar cells cause problems at the end of their lifespan. Due to the construction of a solar panel, the various elements are difficult to separate and the practice is currently that they are shredded. The glass and metal are recycled and the remnants dumped. In this way, the toxic harmful substances end up in the environment. Because the substances are literally baked in solar cells, recycling is many times more expensive than the value of the raw materials themselves. Economically unprofitable and therefore often unfeasible in practice. The only solution would be to impose this on the manufacturer or owner at the end of the lifespan. Wind turbines have completely different problems. In the first place, sulfur hexafluoride is used in electronics. This is used for insulation but it is a very strong greenhouse gas and worldwide many thousands of kilos leak into the atmosphere every year. A bigger environmental problem is the massive slaughter of insects, bats and birds. German studies point to the wind turbines as a major contributor to the decline of the insect population. The smell of large quantities of dead insects on the turbine blades attracts bats and birds that thus have an even greater chance of being hit by the blades. In Germany, with only 30,000 windmills at present, it is estimated that over 100,000 bats are killed every year. Bats are able to avoid these blades with their radar, but because of the underpressure behind the rotor blades, their lungs are almost literally pulled out of their bodies. A horrible death. Exactly how many birds are killed is difficult to determine. Estimates vary widely, but it is clear that each windmill chops up several dozen birds per year. That will therefore run into the many millions each year. A large wind farm was put into operation in the Irish Sea in 2017, and since then the bird population has fallen by tens of percent. And this decline continues year after year. Furthermore, the generators of wind turbines contain large amounts of rare earths for, among other things, the strong magnets. Their extraction and refining in China causes enormous environmental pollution. The constructions of wind turbines requires large amounts of material, mainly steel and concrete. In themselves, these materials are not harmful and are also used in the construction of power plants. The difference, however, lies in its quantities. In order to produce the same amount of energy with wind turbines, more than 10 times as much raw material is needed. 
considering the relatively short lifespan of 20 to 30 years. Compared to the conventional power plant, which easily lasts 40 to 50 years, they also need to be replaced much sooner. The steel, of course, is easy to recycle, but the huge reinforced concrete pedestals in the ground are almost impossible to remove. Nevertheless, a solution will have to be found. We cannot leave hundreds of thousands of concrete blocks in the ground in a century's time, just like the enormous numbers of blades that will be discarded within two to three decades. Numbers will soon run into the many tens of thousands, and the blades are made of fiberglass reinforced epoxy and are very difficult to recycle. In America, they are now often simply buried. Furthermore, in the immediate vicinity of windmills, all trees are often cut down to provide free wind. Ever heard a protest of nature conservation about this? Because good places for wind can often be found on hills. Large roads are regularly constructed to make transport there possible. In turn for this, a lot of nature is damaged. Another underexposed problem is subsonic infrasound. These are inaudible, very low frequency vibrations that can propagate through the ground and make homes unlivable. But at sea, it also disrupts life there. Dolphins and whales that work with sonar themselves suffer a lot from it. And underwater, these frequencies propagate much further and disturb the fish stock. All in all, green energy is not that green at all, and we need to think carefully before we roll out these techniques on an even larger scale. After all, the damage will continue for decades. You can already see that because of the damage to our immediate environment, there is increasing resistance to the installation of green energy generators. So if we find it necessary to save the climate, we will have to do this in such a way that it leaves nature intact. Otherwise, we'll throw the baby out with the bathwater.